chapter 32 give ear you heavens and I will speak and let the earth hear the words of my mouth my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon the tender grass and as the showers upon the herb for I will proclaim the name of the Lord ascribe you greatness unto our God the rock his work is perfect for all his ways are justice a God of faithfulness and without iniquity just and right is he is corruption his no his children is the blemish a generation crooked and perverse do ye thus requite the Lord O foolish people and unwise is not he your father that hath gotten you hath he not made you and established you remember the days of old and consider the years of many generations ask your father and he will declare unto you your elders and they will tell you when the Most High gave the nations their inheritance when he separated the children of men he set the borders of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel for the portion of the Lord is his people Jacob is the lot of his inheritance he found him in a desert land and the waste a howling wilderness he compassed him about he cared for him he kept him as the apple of his eye as an eagle that stirreth up her nest hovereth over her young spreadeth abroad her wings taketh them beareth them on her pinions the Lord alone did lead him and there was no strange God with him he made him ride on the high places of the earth he did eat the fruitage of the field and he made him suck honey out of the crag and oil out of the flinty rock curd of kine and milk of sheep the fat of lambs the rams of the breed of Bashan and he goats with the kidney fat of the wheat and the blood of the grape you drankest foaming wine but Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked you didst wax fat you didst grow thick you didst become gross and he forsook God he made him and he contemned with the rock of his salvation they roused him to jealousy with strange gods with abominations they provoke him they sacrificed unto demons no gods gods that they knew not new gods that came up late which your fathers dreaded not of the rock that begot you you wast unmindful and did forget God that bore you and the Lord saw and spurned because of the provoking of his sons and his daughters and he said I will hide my face from them I will see what their end shall be for they are a very froward generation children in whom is no faithfulness they have roused me to jealousy with a no God they have provoked me with their vanities and I will rouse them to jealousy with a no people I will provoke them with a vile nation for a fire is kindled in my nostrils and burneth into the depths of the nether world and devoureth the earth with her produce and setteth ablaze the foundations of the mountains I will heap evils upon them I will spend mine arrows upon them the wasting of hunger and the devouring of the fiery boat and bitter destruction and the teeth of the beast I will send upon them with the venom of the crawling things of the dust without shall the sword bereave and in the chambers terror slain both young man and virgin the suckling with the man of gray hairs I thought I would make an end of them I would make their memory cease from among men were it not that I dreaded the enemy's provocation lest their adversaries should misdeem lest they should say our hand is exalted and not the Lord hath wrought all this for they are a nation void of counsel and there is no understanding in them if they were wise they would understand this they would discern their latter end how should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had given them over and the Lord had delivered them up for their rock is not as our rock even our enemies themselves being judges for their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah their grapes are grapes of gall their clusters are bitter their wine is the venom of serpents and the cruel poison of asps is not this laid up in store with me sealed up in my treasures vengeance is mine and recompense against the time when their foot shall slip for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things that are to come upon them shall make haste for the Lord will judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he sees that their stay is gone and there is none remaining shut up 
or left at large, and it is said, Where are their gods, the rock in whom they trusted? Who did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering? Let him rise up and help you. Let him be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I have wounded, he, I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, as I live forever, if I wet my glittering sword in my hand, take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine adversaries, and I will recompense them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and the captives from the long-haired heads of the enemy. Sing aloud, O you nations of his people, for he doth avenge the blood of his servants, and doth render vengeance to his adversaries, and doth make expiation for, his, for the land of his people. And Moses came and spoke all the words of this song to the ears of the people, he and Hosea, the son of Nun. And when Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel, he said unto them, Set your heart unto all the words wherewith I testify against you this day, that you may charge your children therewith to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is no vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing you shall prolong your days upon the land where you go over the Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spoke unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get you up into the mountain of Abiram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a, a possession. And die in the mount, whither you goest up, and be gathered unto your people, as Aaron your brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because you trespassed against me in the midst of the children of Israel at the waters of Meribath, Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because you sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. For you shall see the land afar off, you shall not go there, into the land which I gave the children of Israel. All right, let's go back up here to verse 1. Give ear, you heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. That's pretty simple to understand. Listen up. Everybody, heaven and earth, everybody. Verse 2, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender grass, and as the showers upon the earth. Doctrine, my teachings, shall drop as the rain. This is the latter rain, see. They got the former rain, the teachings, to, as an example of the latter rain to come. My speech shall distill as the dew. It just forms there like the dew does, a small rain upon the tender grass, gently falling, not to hurt nothing, as showers upon the herb. Same thing as a light shower falling is the word of God, just like this. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe you greatness unto our God, the rock. Verse 4, his work is perfect. For all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness, and without iniquity, just and right is he. There's no injustice in God's law. There's no wrong in God's law. None. Five. Is corruption his? No. His children is the blemish, a generation crooked and perverse. See, this is because they would not obey the law. We won't obey the law. God's law is perfect. What's wrong with God's law? You can't find nothing. There's no error in it. Six. Do you thus requite the Lord? Is this how you repay God for these gifts he's given you, this greatness he's showed you? Is this how you repay him? Oh, foolish people and unwise. Is this how you repay God with no understanding? Is not he your father that has gotten you? Who created man? Who created you? Hath he not made you and established you? Who created the heavens and the earth? This is God. Remember the days of old? Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father and he will declare unto you, your elders, and they will tell you. 
Go ask the old people, and they'll tell you who created the heaven and the earth, who set it up from the beginning when the Most High gave the, to the nations their inheritance, when he established it, when he separated the children of men, he set the borders of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel. He established it for, a, for a, an example, for a sign to come. For the portion of the Lord is his people, Jacob, the lot of his inheritance. He has took Jacob. He's took him to make an example of him. This is the inheritance of God. God inherits the whole earth through this. Ten. He found him in a desert land and in the waste, a howling wilderness, and he surrounded him about. He cared for him, and he kept him as the apple of his eye. This happened in Bethel when Jacob was journeying. See, he laid down that night, and the understanding come to him. Of course, we know, see, he'd been taught all of his life to obey the commandments and the law of God from the beginning, given down by Abraham to Isaac, and Isaac passing them on, leaven as an eagle that stirreth up her nest, hovereth over her young, and spreadeth abroad her wings, and taketh them, and, he, and beareth them on her pinions. Just like this, just the same way an eagle does, setting her nest on high where it can't be reached, spreads her wings down as she comes upon them, upon the nest, and her young stand upon her feet as she flies, the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Jacob, there was no strange God with, with him. Remember, coming out of the land here, they're coming out of the wilderness into the promised land. They have not known these things. They have not known this. All they've known is God. There was no strange God. He made him ride on the high places on the earth and did eat the fruitage of the field and made him to suck honey out of the crag and oil out of the flinty rock how God nourished them when there was no nourishment. God opened up the flinty rock and made the water come forth, made them ride on the high places of the earth, brought them into the uttermost place of blessing. And we'll find that out. We're going to find that out as we go through the book slow. Every, every, every book that God blessed them and there was no blessing left out. Fourteen. Curd and wine, milk of sheep, fat of lambs, rams of the breed of Bashan, he goats with the kidney fat of wheat, the blood of the grape, you drinkest foaming wine, the best of everything here, the best of everything. 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. You did wax fat, you did grow thick, you did become gross, and he forsook God. And he forsook God who made him and contemned with the rock of his salvation. This is what happened. This is what happened. God blessed them so much, they got fat. It says Jeshur in here. The word Jeshur is used three times in the book of Deuteronomy and one time in the book of Isaiah. Four times in the whole book, it's God's nickname for Israel. Yeah, they forsook God who made them. And they contemned with the rock of, the sal of their salvation. Well, they'd grown fat from all that God had given them. And it kicked. This word kick means they rebelled. See, they rebelled. 16, they roused him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations did they provoke him. These strange gods, these not a gods. They sacrificed unto demons, no gods. Gods that they knew not, new gods that came up late, which your fathers dreaded not. These gods that men have just invented, these no gods. These ain't gods, there's only one God. There ain't room for two gods. 18. Of the rock that begot you, you was, not, you was unmindful, and did forget God that bore you. You forgot the God that created you. You didn't think about the God that gave you the law. The God that proved himself to you over a period of many generations. And the Lord saw and he spurned because of the provoking of his sons and daughters. You made him mad. You provoked God to anger through jealousy. Worshiping you're not a gods. 
these gods that are of the work of the mouths of men. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are very forward generation, children in whom no faithfulness. So God hid his face for a moment, and we'll find this written later on here. For a moment he, he turned his face from them, just for a moment, so that they could suffer the punishment coming to them. Why? 21, they have aroused me to jealousy with a no God. They have provoked me with their vanities, I will rouse them to jealousy with a no people. I will provoke them with a vile nation. And this nation that comes up against them is a nation whose speech they don't understand. They have an understanding of God that's ignorance. They worship a not a God. They don't understand the way it really works. They have no understanding of these things. God did this. This is the cup of confusion that Jeremiah speaks of. He took and he caused all the nations to drink it. None of them escaped. No, no, it wasn't none escaped. Yeah. These nations just say, well, we wasn't there. We, didn't, we escaped. No, you didn't escape. No, nobody escapes the wrath of God. Nobody escapes the judgment of God. For a 22, a fire is kindled in my nostrils and burneth into the depths of the nether world and devoureth the earth with her produce and setteth ablaze the foundations of the mountains. That's right. God started this fire, see, kindled in his nostrils, and it burneth to the depths of the nether world. This is the world below. This is the world down underneath I've always talking about. you got to get up out of there. Why? God's burning it down. And it devoureth the earth and her produce. It's, it's devouring men. It's devouring the souls of men, see, and they know it not. It sets ablaze the foundations of the mountains. These very things that these high places are established on, the very foundation that they established their their high place on, what they founded they're not a God on, God's going to set their foundation on fire, see. I will heap evils upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. Well, these arrows are going to be judgment arrows. These arrows of judgment, the wasting of hunger, the word of God, well, Who's teaching this? Who's teaching the truth? Huh? Ain't nobody teaching the truth. The wasting of hunger. The firing of the fiery bolt. Judgments of God coming. Bitter destruction. That's all this is going to bring. And the teeth of beast will I send upon them with the venom of crawling things of the dust. This is where the old serpent was cursed to stay. Where Satan, the evil one, the fallen one, Lucifer, the morning star, with the venom of the crawling things of the dust is where he was sentenced. And that's what this is, the venom, these false teachings from these false teachers, these lying prophets that the world is full of, these teachers of evilness that teach you to fly, that teach you to go after a not a God, to worship these demons. They teach you no understanding. They teach you not to how to, to gain understanding. 25. Without shall the sword bereave, and in your chambers terror slain both young man and virgin, the suckling and the man of gray hairs, young and old. Yeah, young and old. Everyone, both young man and virgin. Yeah, those that have known and those have not known. Why? Because they have no understanding of these things. They don't think about the God that created them. They don't have no understanding. They chase after all these other gods. The sword is the truth. It will bereave. It's going to cause this to come around. And in your chambers, terror. That's in your understanding. See why? Because in a moment, God's made your understanding just ignorance. 26. I thought I would make an end of them. I would make their memory cease from among men. God thought he would just utterly destroy him. That's how angry God got. That's how angry he is. 27. Were it not that I dreaded their enemy's provocation. God knew what would happen if he used somebody to destroy them. Right. What? What's going, what would happen? They would say, our hand is exalted. And not the Lord hath worked all this. They would take claim for it. They would take 
credit for it, see? God knows man. God knows the evilness of man, how they won't sanctify God himself. For they are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. God said you are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. You know, and they say, well, we're wise. We have understanding. We know God. Well, you know what? Eve thought she was still alive after she took of the fruit, too. But God said she's dead. God said you're dead. God said you don't have no understanding. God says you ain't got no counsel. So I believe God, see. I believe what God says. I don't believe what men say. Why? Because God said they ain't got no understanding. They don't have a proper counsel. They're void of counsel. Why? Why are they void of counsel? Because they ain't got no understanding. 29. If they were wise, they would understand this. They would discern their latter end. If you had any understanding, you would know from the beginning God's been declaring the end. You would know you've been going around in circles. Yeah, you've been going around in circles. You've been about long enough here, too, going around in circles. It's time to make the right decision. It's time to quit making the wrong decision. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? Except their rock had given them over and the Lord had delivered them up. You can't accomplish this unless God does it for you. You can't do nothing. You're at the mercy of God. For their rock, with a little r, is not as our rock, with a big r, even our enemies themselves being judges, the whole world's evidence of this. What have they done with their rock? What have they done with their rock? Their little rock. Nothing. They can't accomplish nothing. Not a God. See? But our rock, our rock with the capital R, God himself, has done all this marvelous work so that you can see, so that you can see the truth. From the beginning, he's declared the end of things. 32, for their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall and their clusters are bitter. They ain't got no good vine. Their vine has these bitter grapes that all they're going to do is they're not ripe. They're never going to ripe them. No, because they're lopped off and thrown in the fire. That's why they're never going to ripen. They're bitter. 33, their wine is the venom of serpents and the cruel poison of asps. That's all you're going to get from these false teachings. Poison, venom, that's what they are. They're considered like snakes or serpents or asps, these poisonous snakes. That's right. And they bite you. Why? With their false teachings, injecting this ignorance into you? That's right. 34. Is not this laid up in store with me, sealed up in my treasures? God said, this is laid up in my treasures. This is mine. I, I'll use this any time I want. That's right. That's what he's been doing to the whole earth. You're taken in ignorance. You're taken in your non-understanding. 35, vengeance is mine, and recompense against the time when their foot shall slip. God was waiting for them to make a mistake, because God knew they would. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that are to come upon them shall make haste. This was God's plan from the beginning. He set this up so at the end we could consider all these things perfectly and get understanding and knowledge from God. For the Lord will judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he sees that their stay is gone and there is none remaining, shut up or left at large, he almost makes an utter end. Then he will repent himself. That's what God's wanting to do. God wants you to turn, hear this word, hear this, get understanding and Look out and see the work God's done, this great and marvelous work. And it is said, where are their gods, the rock in whom they've trusted? What? 
That's what happened. Remember, Israel's been so far removed now. People saying, where, where are the gods? The rock in whom they trusted. They ate all the fat and the sacrifices and drank the wine of their strength. And drank, and left him, let him rise up and help you. Let him be your protection. See, because the nations are mocking. They don't think you have a God. They don't think your God was real. See now, 39, that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I will have wounded, I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. God's the Almighty. He has done this. He is wounded. He will heal. There's none that can deliver out of his hand. He's God. You're a whisper in time. You can't do nothing, you men. For I lift up my hand to heaven and I say, As I live forever, God lives forever. There's no man ever lived forever. All of them come to death. God lives forever. 41. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my adversaries and I will recompense them that hate me. Was this is what's going to happen. God's already done it. Why? They provoked him to jealousy. Wet the glittering sword. He sharpened it up. Sharpened up the word. Sharpened up for judgment. Oh yeah, we're going to find later on in the prophets. He not only sharpened this dude for judgment. He has made it to shine. My glittering sword, it says here. Oh yeah, he's polished it furbished it because when he presents this sword on the battlefield in front of his enemy and they look and they see the sun shining and hitting that glittering sword fear's going to come fear's coming that's right judgment's coming because you're going to see the truth of God you're going to understand the truth of God 42 I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and the captives from the long-haired heads of the enemy. In other words, God have vengeance. His arrows are the word of God going forth in judgment. He's going to make them drunk with blood. Why? Because people are in ignorance. The truth shall devour much flesh. Why? Because people are ignorant. They've gone after chasing all these other not a gods, being held captive, being slain by the words of men. This long-haired heads of the enemy here, they, they let their hair grow to show wisdom and, and knowledge back then. But you know that has nothing to do with anything, the length of your hair. An outward show of what? Concealing what? The ignorance within? You either have knowledge or you don't. Your hair is a, is a symbol of nothing. Your outward symbols that you do, these fleshful things that men do to sh make people think that they're some understanding, have some great knowledge. God snaps his finger and you're made ignorant in one moment. Why? Because you went searching after not a God. You went chasing after these not a gods. You made God mad. You made God jealous, see? And he's made you drunken with confusion and ignorance, and you're not a God. 43, sing aloud, O you nations of his people, for he doth avenge the blood of his servants, and he doth with vengeance on his adversaries, and he does make expiation for the land of his people. He makes a way. He shows mercy to them, see? Why? Because he used them. He used his people to accomplish this great masterful work that you could see and understand and hear and know there is a God. He does live. He does talk to men. 44. And Moses came and spoke all the words of the song in the ears of people. He and Hoshea, the son of Nun, or Hoshea, which is Joshua, the same word it means salvation well the song of Moses is over it ended there 43 44 
we go to a different subject. 45, and when Moses made an end of speaking all these words to Israel, he said unto them, Set your heart unto all the words wherewith I testify against you this day, that you may charge your children therewith to serve to do all the words of this law. Make sure you teach this to your children. See, Make sure they know the law. Make sure they understand all these things. For it is no vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing you shall prolong your days upon the land, whether you go over the Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spoke unto Moses the selfsame day, saying, Get you up to the mount of Abraham, unto the mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that it's over against Jericho. And behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for possession. He says, go up top of this mountain, Mount Nebo. It's over on the, on, in the land of Moab, over against the Jericho side of the mountain. And look, and behold the land of Canaan, which God give to Israel for possession. And die in the mount, whether you go up, and be gathered unto your people, as Aaron your brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. In other words, Moses, this is, this is the mount you're going to die in. This is the mount, just like your brother died in Mount Hor, you're going to die the same way. Because you trespassed against me in the midst of the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zen, because you sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. And if we went back, we'd see that was a was a really bad day. The children had Moses badly distraught, and Moses was very angry that day. The children were crying out. They thought, they said, what's God brought us out here to die? To thirst us to death? And God told Moses, he said, speak to the rock, Moses. We ain't going to go into all this. 52, for you shall see the land afar off, but you shall not go there into the land which I gave the children of Israel. And that, that was it for Moses. See, Moses was left outside. Moses wasn't allowed to enter in for one little simple trespass against God. He didn't sanctify God. He didn't make sure that God was first in the sight of the people, which God is always first. God is the powerful. God, all things come from God. No man does anything. No man is great. He can gather no more, no less than anybody else. None better than any other. All are equal in the eyes of God. God exalted above men. God does all things. God causes these things to come to pass. He's made a great example. He's done a great work. We're going to find this out later in the book. We're going to move on. Moving on. Chapter 33.